You guys hear me still? Let it freeze. I think it just froze. Can you guys hear me still? You keep lagging. Okay, is it good now? Okay. okay, guys. Um, I think we just started the recording. I'm going to be asking you guys in the chat, what do you guys think about what Mohamed Salah uh, said in here? Uh, always believe in your ability and in your goals. This is the only way you'll be able to reach them. Anybody want to have an opinion before we start the session? Uh, write it down. Want to start making you guys get used to interacting with us? Nobody's writing anything. That's not good. The next one, Messi. If only if love something enough. Come on, guys, write it down. And the third one. Talent without working hard is nothing. These are all uh, top-level players. Obviously, to some of you, they're the GOATs. I'll ask a question that will be probably starting the interaction. Who is the GOAT for you? Write it down. Who's the GOAT for you? That messy... Messi, so Messi's all right. At least we got the communication started. That's good. All right. So attacking principles. This is a U.S. soccer and goal expectations as well. Before we go into the board, I'm gonna kind of go about this defensive third build up. Goal is position to pass and dribble forward. So uh, the way that we do this, or we see the way our our system works, we go. Uh, our outlet is always wide, right? So general principles is exploit the opponent when uh, unbalanced and disorganized. To be able to get to that, when we go wide, their team is going to spread out. They're going to be sliding one way, and we're going to start seeing some movement. Every action causes a reaction. And if we can, the moment we catch them unbalanced, that's when we uh, see the opportunity to penetrate the defense and go through. So these are some principles. Uh, when we go to the, the middle third, the build up, possession to pass and dribble forward. This is a critical one, too. Uh, general principles exploit when unveils, same thing. And we're going to be going to offensive third, build up and scoring goal or goals, exploit the opponent, unbalanced, organized. These are the way that U.S. soccer kind of wants us to speak. These are the terms that terminology that they want us to speak. So if you can see that it's all about the main thing in each level coming from defense, midfield to offense is all about trying to catch the other team unbalanced and disorganized. To be able to do that, we need to make our movement as a team to be able to make them disorganized. So now with the new share, please let me know uh, in you guys can share the green Practical table. Is it good? Uh, 
Thumbs up if you guys can see it. The connection is bad today. Is that what it is? Yeah, how about the sound? Can you hear me? It's interesting. We never had this nothing problem before. Uh, okay, uh, let me know if it's better. Okay, so more and more people coming in, maybe that's why if somebody has a small, slow connection, sometimes that. Okay, I'm allowing more people to come in. Um, okay, so everybody can see the board now. Thumbs up. Okay. All right, so we play a three, four, three in uh, with Fabian's team. We always play a three back system. And I'm gonna go over the responsibilities. So the moment the outside wing backs, the moment uh, we lose possession of the ball, we need to make sure we hit the deepest player. If there's a player who's dribbling the ball from here, and you have a mark here, you stay with your mark. The center mid, even a center back can step to that player dribbling the ball or the tracking mat outside attacking mat. You need to stay with your mark centrally and not actually step to this player. Exactly what a team in Washington State, especially playing 4-4-2 or 4-3-3, would want you to do. So you stay with the mark. So uh, when the ball uh, is with us, we want to make sure that you guys understand that you need to go as wide as you can and start attack. Unless... Unless the player here, defender has the ball, and a center uh, player right here is getting pressure, this is not allowing this player to see forward. So this is a run from you that will be wasted. If the player is looking this way and he's getting pressure on them, please back up as deep and as wide as you can. That's going to give us an outlet and press them, uh, force us to be able to go. My I, I grabbed the wrong guy. This guy, my bad. So uh, this is going to allow you to have space and time to be able to attack for the next ball. So make sure, make sure that if your team is not looking forward with the ball, as an outside wing back, you need to make sure you come back deeper to be able to give an option so we can possess better. Um, another thing that is very important for the outside wing back, uh, the moment we say cheat, coach says cheat, that means we are need to be like, let's just say we're on the other side and uh, we are pressing their defense. But the ball is all the way here. If the ball is all the way here, our whole team is going to be sliding that way. This is what we're going to be looking like. And you're going to be sliding here too. This guy's going to be sliding. This guy's going to be sliding. This guy's going to be sliding. So when we say cheat to an outside wing back, we are talking to the opposite side. Opposite side steps, prints, because we see that they're trying to open the game to the opposite side. When we say cheat, the outside wing back steps and opposite side center back steps. And this too, stays like this, so suddenly we turn into a four-back system. When we say cheat, it's critical that you understand that it's kind of like wanted to give you kind of a little bit pointers about playing outside wing back in the system uh, with a limited time that we're going to be talking about. Team shape is very critical in our system. You do it right, you can beat national champions like we did uh, Vinacci. So, um, offensive pressure. If the left back has the ball, right attack him at steps. Forward cuts the pass to the drop. And center, uh, other side center attack him. That's why you shouldn't be wide. You should be on the center. You cut the pass to the center area. You come back here. If you're not making it on time, yes, the center mid can step. 
other sentiment can cover, and you gotta cover the central area though then. So you need to be able to do this. We cut the path. So because he's gonna be looking for the best option, he is, is the center. The moment we allow them to go to center, that's when their whole game system is gonna start happening. So we wanna make sure we cut those passes and we share the load by communicating. So if the ball is on the Y, our team shape. We do want the attacking midfield to track back the left back. So if the left back is here, we want you to track him back. Outside wing back, if this is the last guy here, outside wing back is the guy here. Center back is going to come back here. Uh, right center mid is going to slide here. Center, center back deeper here. You're all sliding. You see that? And the other defensive midfield coming to center. And look what happens. This left wing back going to slide like he's a um, center mid. They come all the way. And this guy is going to be tracking back to here. So we are leaving this space open. So if they somehow, and because we closed every angle here, it's going to be pretty tough for them to get out. But if somehow they make a long ball here, who goes? Like let's just make, they made an amazing pass to here. Who's going to go to this player? Tell me. This is the wing back. The left center back, back in mid. Who's going there? Very good, guys. Left center back. So, deepest guy, always going to be the first one. Wing back becomes the center back then. Okay? We're going to be recovering to our positions. One of the demons at least needs to be here. The other demon needs to be coming outside the box. This guy is tracking back the player here. And by the time the ball goes to here, we should be in this situation right away. But the deepest player should be the first one to step. A lot of times, unfortunately, they wait. If this two will send everybody that way again. So if there's a beautiful long ball somehow to this player, sometimes the center back kind of waits for this guy to make it. Oh, wing back, go. Do not do this. You're not going to make it. By the time this guy touches the ball, he's already going to be in. So if the center guy comes from the central area and deeper, he's going to be able to cut the angle to the shot or immediate cross. So it's critical that you go first. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, please let me know if you understand. All right, for the center backs, this is also critical that you guys understand this. Once we get the ball, we've been talking about this, do not ever be flat. So if the pressure is coming, if you're flat trying to pass the ball like this, they can cut. This is the easiest. If the smart player always going to cut this back. So if this player is looking this way and dribbling, let's just say this way, you want to be deeper than the player. You want to run back and have the space looking forward. So this is the vision you see from here. If you were here, you're only looking at the ball this way. So you don't know what's coming from here at all. Okay, And you don't know the next pass either. We do that. So we want to make sure you understand you're going to be backing up to give an option. Because the player, this is a very important part now. Sometimes, you know how we say, if the player in the center gets the ball, uh, you need to go wide as a center back. If the player, center back, is looking this way and dribbling that way, opposite side cannot be going wide. He needs to start coming back in. Because if he somehow, he messes this up, steps on the ball, whatever, and he loses the ball right here, you are the only chance we have to be able to defend that other than the key. So if the player turns the ball, because he sees the pressure coming, turns the ball and starts looking that way, and you can go deep and wide this way. He's dribbling now this way, and you need to be coming in here. Same thing with the outside. So every time any player is looking one way, opposite side should be coming into the center. 
So every time you see the jersey number of your teammate, you should be coming in to the central area. Does that make sense? And of course, if to say he's looking this way and we are coming in, right? We're coming in, we're coming in, but these are these guys also need to be go as wide as they can, and the sentiment needs to be here. So if there is a pressure situation here, we can find bomb and bomb and bomb right away to the spacing. But if he's standing here and they are actually doing pressure, and you are more central. So when we find this pass to the now pressure is going to come. He has no outlets. He's not going to be able to see the outlet. So now this guy is going to look like it's his fault. And sometimes, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, one of our teammates got mad at a player. I'm going to use the name, Gavin. And I actually said, Gavin didn't have an option. So, he, I mean, sometimes uh, we make mistakes, but in this case, if the pressure is coming and our outside player is not here, this is the failure of not this defender, but the failure of the player here. And the failure of the player here to not coming this way. We need to be able to create triangles all over the place. So if the ball is going to come to this player, this next player should be in the between two players. This player should be here, a little bit deeper than the player, so he can have an option here and there, or here and there. And next player is going to be stepping in. Bomb, we're getting out with triangles. Does that make sense? So it's really important that every time we look one way, now the player that looks at that way, that is your cue. He's looking this way. This is his vision. This is his vision. He's looking this way. So we need to start moving towards his vision right there. Does that make sense? And everybody that way. So now let's put the ball to this player. And this player is looking wide first. And this is this guy's vision. And he has more options, right? He has a vision to here. So now we need to make sure, unless he's looking just this way, and that's what he's seeing. We need to make sure that we are in these areas. A lot of you guys are not moving off the ball to the areas you're supposed to be once the ball is leading that way. That's why you guys cannot find openings and spaces. It's important that you slide to the side of the ball. And in this case, in this case let me just get rid of this. Um, like in the, our system, they're going to be pressing here. So the center attacking midfield is going to be on the left side checking in to this ball. So that's going to take the right back with them. That creates the space. So when we get the ball, our forward should not be right here. Our forward, the moment that this player gets the ball, this is the space that player sees. And this is an immediate attack opportunity for us. If the forward sees that, this is a great attack. And this is the way that the center, uh, the outside attacking it now, he becomes the center forward and he's running in to the opposite side. Now we're attacking with numbers. Everybody's stepping. Even the wing back now going wide. Everybody's going up. But this is an outlet that is the best counterattack. Uh, if you guys want to uh, look at this, uh, Leverkusen last year win the German League with the system supporting Lisbon. After a long time, they won the Portu Portugal League with this system. And the, one of the best outlets is this. And uh, one of the teams that did this as a getting out system is Liverpool. When Mane, Salah, and and uh, in the center, Firmino was playing for them, they would always make those zigzag runs to create space. One checks in and the other one goes behind. They put that ball to wide, that space, and they're in play right away. Because no defense should be waiting on the outside. Defense always going to start from the center. Okay, So that is always an opportunity for you to utilize the space on the outside. Okay, so um, any questions until this point? Marco, I'm going to unmute you again. Uh, Luis, I'm going to unmute you again. Uh, 
process. Uh, I think Fabian is still here. Raul is here. I'll unmute Raul too if he wants to speak. I think uh, Omar is here. I don't see Fabian right now. I don't know where he is. Is he here still? Fabian, let me see if you're here. I don't see. Okay. Uh, Fabian, uh, does this kind of cover what you were going for? I'm going to talk a little bit more, but in general. Yeah, um, I feel like uh, where, where I'm struggling with is the outside mids and forwards. Okay. So, uh, so they just need to make sure they'll be sliding to the side. And obviously, I have a feeling that your biggest issue is this center forward not joining the attacks because he sees this player here, mm -hmm. so automatically assumes that he doesn't need to make a run behind him this way. Yeah. This is the best. Move. Also that also that left um that left forward is opening up wide and and taking and taking the space of the outside mid. Yeah, he but, needs to stay in the center. Okay, so you don't want him shifting wide at all. No, uh, unless unless uh, you're gonna play with the ten. Or look, well, let's put in a big screen real quick, guys. Uh, I apologize. I'm going to change this real quick. Um, uh, can you guys see this board? Yeah. Yes. All right. So uh, here is the kind of like uh, visualization of this. We're going to be stepping up all these players to stay in there. Everybody play. Okay. Okay. Now we play attack mid. So we have a couple choices with this. Now, if Fabian is going to play our usual way, guys, he's going to be marked right here. Mm. Uh, Omero, please don't play with the board. Uh, so this player, let's just say if this player is here, he's going to be marked by this player or that player uh, central position. So our outlet, once we get the ball wide, let's just say we just possess the ball. We pass the ball to the wide player. Wide as we can, right? We get the ball, we touch it to here. The first place we want to look this way. He's going to be getting a pressure and Obviously, all our players need to be sliding. Center mid here. Uh, this player should be checking into this area. So if they kind of cover the central, I mean, outside option so much, you can find this pass mm -hmm. for our number 10. But if they are more worried about the central, which this is going to be the case, our forward needs to make the run to here. And so you, don't want that, you don't want that left man making that run at all. Um... No, like okay, no, so unless like yeah, unless you want to do this. So let's just say this is the way that I play the dollar and back in the day still is. But if you do and Fabian, you played for me, you did this before with me too. Mm -hmm. If you use the center player as a false nine, so he checks in, then the players need to be wide. Okay, especially if the attack is this way, yes, then this guy is going to be the white. If you have the false nine, guys, false nine means you're not the last uh, player in the defense. You start there, but you check into gaps. So, which means if you use a false nine, if Fabian decides to use a false nine, let's just say they press and our player is standing from here, but makes a check. That means the other two needs to be the last man. So when this false nine gets the ball, right away he's going to have the space to go find them immediately. So you can play that way. Then, yes, you can have the outside player one. Does that make sense? Which one requires the less less running for the outside two? Because I feel like we're not in shape where the outside two can be running. Yeah, if your center forward can run, the least running for the tens is this one. 
the one that they stay in the center, and okay. the forward makes the run. Okay, so that'd be – I'm probably playing Abraham or Arium in there. Yeah, and if they, as long as they're running, I think you'll be fine. Okay. I mean, someone like uh, – what's his name? Um, I forgot it now, the fast guy you have. Uh, Angel's hurt, so he's out. So it would be it, between it'd be between Ironman or or um, okay, yeah. Angel would be perfect for that though, like because of the speed and stuff. Dude. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and and another way, of course, is what we're gonna be covering is uh, playing it with one six, hmm. which is a lot more offensive, and one ten in front of them. So that way, your outside player can stay wide. But this guy on the opposite side, of course, needs to be still sliding in. Yeah, must stay but, uh, 110 and 16. You can play with that and bomb, 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 or find this guy and he makes a diagonal in front of him. One of the biggest things I see in our offenses, well, let's just say, it doesn't matter what system, if we are in attack like this, guys, please pay attention to this part. The, the best way to, you know how we, we need to mess up the balance of the defense, right? So when you guys are running straight in when this player has the ball, he doesn't even have a cross yet. This makes the defense's job really easy. But what makes the defense's job really hard, when you make a diagonal run to this space, right here, when you make a diagonal run to this space, he's going to follow you to a point. That opens space for you, or even if they overcommit, for this player to dribble. And this is when you utilize this place on the wing back. So the best way is if you're a forward, please stop standing in front of your own team like asking for the ball. You want to stop an attack. When you stay in front of your player asking for the ball, you are not doing a favor to your team. Make a diagonal run. Open the space for this player to dribble in or see the next pass in there. You see, every action has a reaction, correct? So when you're standing right here, when you make a run, you might affect both these players. And then it opens up. If this guy sees the space right here, utilize the space, and this guy will be one-on-one -on -one with the player. And obviously the defender is going to come. So if they overcommit, then you, both you guys open the space for this guy. So it's, it's critical that you understand every action you do as a reaction. So uh, if you do not Re, like do any action and stay where you are you are a very low level player and it makes it really easy to defend you so if you're just running in every single time straight into the forward yes we can score goals like this but if you're dealing with a good team this is not going to work so we want to make sure that you guys utilize the space by making diagonal runs once we're in attack so it's it's I think one of the things, uh, Fabian, you and, I, you and I talked about uh, some of the players' offensive runs. Uh, we, we are doing too much of these straight runs. And they can back up. But uh, one of the things that smart player can do, you know how we want them some, sometimes to check in and, and be an option for the player to be so we can open the game? But unfortunately, our players, like this guy is in motion. He beats a player and he's moving with the ball. Our player checks in on the way of him. Mm -hmm. and he just cuts the passing lanes. <clears throat> so if he's going to be showing up, he should be showing up away and up, right? If he's going to do that. But most of the time, I really, if this guy is dribbling with the ball, we want them to make diagonal runs to opposite side. We want them to kind of mess up the defense's uh, shape and balance. Because you standing in the center is definitely not helping us. Especially, like I said, if you're dealing with a better defense than what we face. Let me see. I think there might be some... Uh... All right. Anything uh, about this, guys? Marco, is that becoming more clear as a new coach that you you are with us? Yes, okay. yes. I'm just uh, with me right now. It's just finding the players um, that can play and know what to do in those positions. Yeah, one of the good things about the system that I put is because of the fact that you can play as an under. 
and and because you crowd the central area a lot, and even if you have lacking in skill and lacking in speed, you can still handle teams yeah. who have those better than. That's why yeah. you can contain them better. And if you can play it as you played at an EPT level or college level, then this system becomes very fun to play. Because you can yeah. actually defend well, but when you spread out, you have a lot of options to possess the ball too. I agree. So, um, any questions about this? Fabian, do you have any questions that you, you face in training or in games that we should address right here? Yeah, if my if my left uh my left and right forward are out of breath, where do you want them to rest? Pretty much, like defensive. Um, honestly, like like I I'm gonna just answer this a little bit uh, bluntly and honestly. So sometimes mm -hmm. we have players who are good, and you don't want to take them out because they they know what to do with the ball, right? Yeah. And and to rest them, I usually pull them in that maybe wing back switch with the wing backs and attacking mitts and then tell them to stay deep and uh, just rest it. Okay. But I don't want to take them out of the game because oh, they are mid and tell them to stay back. Yeah, wing back, yeah. Okay. And then same thing with the uh, D mitts. I I rotate like let's just say I I am struggling with my bench not being experienced, you know, they're just not there and they they need to learn a lot to be able to get more playing time. I switch my center mid that has been running a lot back to defense and put my center outside back to the demon area. And okay. they are more fresh. The least amount of running happens in the system is the three center backs. Yeah. So they are the most fresh players and you can always switch them. I just wouldn't touch this player right here. Mm -hmm. This player, as long as they learn what to do, they are solid there and they, they need to be staying. But if these guys need to rest, switch uh, with this. And you remember when I coached you too, we did this a lot. Yeah. So um yeah, wing backs outside forwards definitely good could be a good option to switch. All they have to do is, you know, stay back and it allows the other uh, outside player to be more active. But outside full outside mid might be tired at that point. You might just want to pull this guy back but sub out this guy that goes in there because he might be too tired to do the forward. Job. You know, that's your call at the game. Just recognize that. So um, if you guys want to be like you're behind, don't do this the whole game. I usually do this the last 10 minutes. But if you want to press, let's say these guys are trying to possess the ball because they're winning, press with the 3 4 3 with 110. So close this gap right here. So that way. And always send one of the defense <laughs> to the gap right here, and we just block them out, and they won't be able to get out so easy. I would play with 10, three tens pretty much, and one nine. Uh, one outside player attacking mid, outside attacking mid. I call these three times, even though it's an 11 and a seven, really, but I like it but between because they, I want them to be like playmaker and come back to center a lot too. So, because if this guy comes in, it opens the space for the wing back. And that actually creates a lot more opportunities for us. But uh, one of the issues, of course, we have as a, as coaches to be faced, our wing backs aren't attacking as much, correct? So that's when we need to make sure that we utilize that. Any any question about this? No. Luis, uh, do you have anything like what tick system you guys are playing this weekend? I'm still deciding if I want to go with this one or or usual system, you know, the two, uh, the four in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I don't have a mobile forward. They can be doing the Yano runs. Only if I put uh, maybe Cruz up there, so he can run like crazy, maybe he can do that. But Tara yeah. is not going to do that. So you're talking about two sixes in the middle, right? Correct. So you're going to be playing four, three, four, three like this. Yeah. The only thing is that like, you need to just explain to them that they are not outside forwards. They are in the center. They are two tens. One of them close to the left side, one of them close to the right. But that's why when we pass the ball, this player passed the ball to the right back, left attacking with rest responsible for the right back, 
this guy is going to cut the pass, and this guy should be close enough to cut this pass so we don't take off and lose this spot right here. We should be staying in position. This is going to kind of mess up the other team, not seeing space in between our players. Yeah, I kind of scared that they don't do their run, you know, the assignments, and we're going to be empty in the middle. But we just stay on the one side. Yeah, that's what happened last year. And Nathan yeah. and Hamun was kind of lazy, even though they're good players. They were not sliding, and that kind of killed you. Yeah. And and, and Bruno didn't either. Uh, no offense to Bruno and his <laughs> players, but <laughs> uh, those three would not move. So when you face a team like this, I mean, if you can move like this, this is great. This is going to be really making it hard. And in this case, remember what we talked about. So let's just say this guy cuts the ball back and he sees this long ball. What do we say? We yeah. say cheat. And this guy sprints and this guy sprints on the opposite side center back. And we cheat and we score a lot of goals from this, by the way, once we do it right. I scored a goal against, uh, when I was coaching Steelers, we, we scored a goal against uh, Portland Timbers uh, and two opportunities like this too. I mean, one of them came from a throw-in, but it started with this attack. We had, we were one on one, so it's a very very good uh, attacking. But you have to go together. So let's just say, if we say cheat and outside wing back goes, and we leave this huge gap in here, they can find the space is more dangerous. Yeah. So once we say cheat, outside wing back steps. And the outside back steps between them, so we can actually cover that area. Does that make sense, guys? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions, or do you want me to cover anything else, uh, Luis? You have a game too. Um, how will be the midfield? We played like the normal uh, two D and two tens, and one forward. Oh, the two uh, defensive mids, one one attacking mid and two forwards. I think mm -hmm. uh, Omar just asked that. Uh, explain a little bit of the how the. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what he's talking about. So this is the three five two. This is an original system tactic. So you have two forwards. Yes, you can play like this too. But the problem with this one is you need to count on these two forwards to constantly run together. So if this, this guy runs and this guy doesn't and he's staying right here somewhere, this is going to be really easy for them to possess the ball and get out. And if you win the ball, this is going to be really tough to connect. So let's just say, same scenario. We get the ball. We get the ball and we find a wide player. Both the forwards should be making a run this way, like 10, 15 yards from each other. Why? Because if we pass to feet, no, an attacking midfield, of course, uh, is sliding this way. So if he pass to his feet, one touch back and one attack, or he'll be sliding this way, right? They will all be sliding this way. So one touch feet, he can find this player's diagonal run, uh, or he can find the opposite side wing back and we're in attack right away. Okay. So this is critical that we understand that we need to create this triangle by the two forwards making a run together when the ball is outside. So another option is, of course, passing it to this guy's head. He can flick it to this player to make a run or directly over this player and he makes a diagonal run to here and you need to be making a run. In. Don't give a drop. We have players coming in to give a drop to the player. So make a run in once we release the ball that way. Does that make sense? So let's go over that again. We get the ball, two forwards close to each other. okay? And we can either pass the ball to the first forward's feet and find 10 and then go out or 10 finds the other side. Or we skip the this the number nine and go to the other number nine. And now you have to go in. Don't be dumb and lazy and give an option here. Then we cannot go up. And center backs are, are going to be just standing where they are. You need to keep the center backs busy by also running this way. So you can have an immediate opportunity if they don't recover. But if they do recover, that's going to open space for our number 10 to utilize right here. 
right away. Does that make sense? So every action has a reaction, right? So yep. three, five, two, we can play this, but this two forwards need to be mobile, constantly running. So how do we do the pressure with the two forwards in our system? We do want them to slide, uh, cut the pass, and number 10 is already in the center. Same thing, finally. Very easy, right? Same idea. Yeah. Um, if you do the 3-5-2 because you are not in shape and you want to defend, then you call 50-yard pressure or 60-yard pressure. So this is the 60-yard pressure starts around the half circle where it ends. So you tell your players not to press the other team until they get to that point. So you contain more energy this way. Uh, if you guys are familiar with European soccer, uh, AC Milan for a long time played with the 60-yard pressure. Uh, and and Pato uh, was one of the, the most successful counterattack players once they steal the ball from here. Uh, Pirlo, you know, that got two souls and all that stuff. So they, those guys were amazing, like defending deep and not giving space. But once they get the ball, they spread out really quickly. And they had a lot of good counterattack options. And if you want to do 70 yard, of course, you're going to draw the line from here. Uh, tell them 70 yard pressure. And in some cases, when I played against the Ballard team, we did 50 yard pressure. And we actually, Ballard in that year, when they won the league, we played them when I was coaching. Uh, my team was actually the closest one to close enough to beat them. And even the USL two teams were getting killed by them at 8-0, 5-0, 11-0. And, and Steelheads, I was coaching them there. We we only lost to them 2-0, and one of them was our own goal, and one of them was a penalty kick. And we had four one-on-ones, and we missed them all. We got too nervous in front of that big 3,000 people crowd. And our players got nervous and just shaked and missed the shots. But... When you contain him like this in the 50-yard area, that means pretty much you're playing a much better team than you are and you want to contain them. Uh, not everybody likes this kind of mentality for sure, but it's definitely uh, something I got when I was playing professional soccer. We were really aware of our strengths. All right, so I have some private messages. Let's see. What if the other team is completely dominating the game? Omero is saying uh, they are just passing the ball in their defense. Should we uh, press high and try to get the ball or rest, wait for them to make the attack? Uh, depends on the score, Omero. Like, if you guys are 0-0, zero, zero, uh, you want to wait for the coach to tell you when to press. If you try to press early, you're going to get tired, number one, and you're going to be giving more op opportunities for a better team, faster team behind you. So coach needs to pick his moments. We are not there to lose the game. We're not trying to tie the game. But we need to fight, find the right moment to press. Like I, I usually do 10, 15 minutes first half uh, or the last uh, 10, 15 minutes first half. Uh, same thing in the second half. I come in hard and I pull back. And then I do another 10 minutes of pressure high. Because if you do that, not, none of you guys can do a 90-minute pressure. To be honest, or 80 minutes or in your case. 60 minutes. So uh, we want to make sure you contain your energy so you can be healthier, do the right kind of attack. And another one came. Yeah, that's the same thing. Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, Marco, do you have anything about this? No. Um, I think that all makes sense to me. The only thing when you were talking about the attack with the two forwards, um, do you want the number six to Support show support coming straight underneath, or do you want them to come up at an angle? Uh, that's a good question. So, if you're playing with two, oh shoot, I need to this. If you're playing, let's just say they're high right now, and we got okay. the ball right, and this guy comes here, and this guy comes closer. So, if this guy appears here, but he's not making it there, I do want the six to press there. Right, okay. but if the number ten is there, I do want the one of the sixes to step up high to this next gap. Okay. The other six has to stay back though. Hold back. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, because I just wasn't sure. I was trying to explain it to the team yesterday, 
um, not to overflow the players because they tend to all want to show support or not enough players to show support. Yeah. So I was trying to find the find the fine line of when they should decide to go show support or give that player that space to take someone on either one on one or yeah. And we go from there, right? Like so the the whole idea is of the two sixes, one of them can become an eight in an attack. Okay. The other one has to stay six. Sometimes what we what happens is both the sixes in the system price to attack. And and we have like if you lose this ball, there is this huge gap, especially if the forward defense is not stepping up right away. And they they yeah. uh, started an organized attack. I do like okay. the one six kind of staying deep. Two reasons to help the defense first, second reason to be the guy. If we don't see an option, they're actually doing a great job defending. We should always be able to drop it back to somebody to restart the whole yes. process. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Okay. Does that help you guys? Uh, Luis, do you have anything? Let me unmute you again. Uh, I think I did not mute. Uh, let's see. Uh, Raul, if you have anything, I'm going to unmute you now. Uh, Omar, I'm going to unmute you now too. Uh, our coaches, Raul, I think Fabian is already muted again. Let's see, Fabian. Do um, you guys have anything but for this weekend? I'm good. I think I'm going to go for a 3-4-3 three, three because okay. with the two forward, I feel we're going to leave us so many gaps and we're going to get hurt really fast. Yeah, it's always good to have the three options for if your forwards, two forwards are not mobile, always will have an outside option at least or at least in the opposite side center so you go, you're gonna have options to be able to open the game with that. Yeah. uh three five two is definitely good to block the center so uh if the other team is very strong coming from the central area their best players they're sixes or six and eights um yeah i mean three five two might be a good option just to block what they do but if you're confident about your team uh you can continue to do what you're doing uh, unless, you know, the result is not changing at all and they're actually scoring goals and you need to make that choice to be more defensive. But we do like to play as a club as a three-back system. Uh, and we will go over something that I do a little bit crazy. It's like a last 10 minutes kind of thing, a 2-5-3. And one time I was playing Vinacci and actually Raul and, and um, uh, Caesar's team and Alfredo's team was that team. We're losing in the second half, whole second half. I play with two, five, three. And we just did long balls and we just pressed them and would not let them play. We knew that they wanted to play in the back. And and we just uh, came back and won the game 4 3. 3 0 first half, second half, 4 3. And of course, the moment that we got fourth goal, we pulled back 3 5 2 with a deep 50 yard pressure. And then we didn't give them any chances after that. So. Uh, it just needs to be able to read the play really well and 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 read the game and read what's going on, read the other team and make adjustments. You guys do not have to stick to what we start with. Make adjustments as we go. And one of the best things to me as a coach is, is playing that game. And, and but don't do too much that is affecting the players' minds and they don't exactly know what they're doing. Um, and there is a lot of ways to go around that, and we, we're going to be talking more about that. And I'm doing my e license uh, right now as well. I'm learning some stuff there that to communicate better with you guys, and I'm going to pass on to whatever I learned there uh, as well. All right, guys. Anything else you want to add? Fabian, are you good? Yeah, that, no, that was good. Okay, uh, roll. Uh. I guess just something for the defense, uh, since we do play with the three center backs, just the center center back, just for the defenders to be aware that the center center one is always the deepest one out of the three. Yes. Very, and, very then, and then also just for like the center backs or just defense in general, like let's say the other team is possessing and the defense, our defense is pushed up high, like, I don't know, to our 40 or something or even 50 mm -hmm. whenever the defense from the other team has possession or the midfield let's say and they look up that should be a quick like signal 
that our defense should be reading, looking at their eyes or head when they look up, we immediately need to drop back because that tells us like long balls coming or, yep. you know, we don't want to get killed with speed if they have speed on the other team. So great point. And the body should be facing this way, running this way. And your head is looking at the ball. So if you are backing up with your body going this way and then uh, like back backing up, like facing this way, both your body and the kind of backing up like that, you're going to be slow. So if a long ball is going to be about to come that way, you should be running lower body facing here and your eye on the ball and running backwards. So you need to make sure that otherwise you, you won't make it on time. And it's a great point. The cue is when the player looks up ready to make a long ball, you need to pull the defense back deep um, because we don't do offside traps. We stay pretty deep. Honestly, like uh, in my last six, seven years of coaching semi-professional soccer, and our teams only gave up maybe two or three one-on-ones. And that's amazing because we actually stay deep. Uh, we have other issues, right? Like we allow crosses. So so we need to be good in, on air um, to win the ball on air with the three-back system. But when we stay full deep right away, we don't allow easy one-on-ones. We just need the keeper to be active coming out outside the 18. And and you have an active goalie. You have uh, active defense pulling back deep, like Raul said. And we're in business. Um, center back being deep, though, is a critical point. Uh, I have seen many times this forward is coming back and our outside back is not, you know, pushing up with the center back. And then suddenly they do a one lucky long ball. And this guy is actually one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and scores the goal because this guy did not push up. So we want to make sure the deepest guy should be the deepest and everybody else. Sometimes wing backs don't come back on time. They don't step up right away, right? That kills you because the, the center back should be the last one. You cannot be behind this guy ever. You need to step up right away. All right, guys. Uh, I will be sharing this. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate you all. Uh, I will see you guys in the future. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Guys. Nice.